All right. Got some people joining in now. It's about a minute till. We're just kind of starting a little bit early, so everyone will have an opportunity to join in. So we are live here on Facebook and also on YouTube. Some of the folks on YouTube is easier for them to get it up on their TV. Hopefully this is working all right, getting some people join in. So good evening, everybody. Glad to have you uh, with us tonight uh, here on our Wednesday online only service. Uh, sort of hated to have to do this, but there's no doubt in my mind this is what um, we, we really need to be doing. Uh, as in times past, I could see people who would join in and then if they'd make comments I would see those and I don't see them so something looks a little different but that's okay uh, I don't know how to do that it's telling me to do something but I don't know how to do it so hopefully uh, I'm doing it from my home commute computer tonight because I can do Facebook and um, uh, YouTube at the same time and many people likes the YouTube version. Okay, so uh, we're glad that you are here tonight. We decided to do this uh, just out of an abundance of caution and safety. Uh, we did have someone who is at church Sunday test positive, but fortunately we were in our cars and they never got out of their car and so there was no fear there. So I'm so thankful that we did Parking Lot Church Sunday. I thought it went uh, pretty good. I want to thank Bobby for putting me a fan up on, on those steps, and that was really good. So uh, I thought we had a good service Sunday. We're looking forward to um, uh, tonight as well. Uh, speaking of Sunday, just so you'll know, we will be um, – be out in the parking lot again Sunday. We can say that right now. If something was to change and everything was to get better, then we would probably uh, not do that. But uh, based on right now, all the information we have right now, um, we'll be out in the parking lot Sunday. We will be celebrating communion. And so we'll be doing that together. We'll be using the, uh, the throwaway kit that we've been using here for the last little while. But I look forward to that. We'll have our deacons uh, serve uh, you folks when it comes to time for communion. Uh, we'll have they'll have gloves on. We'll make sure everything make sure that everything is good and, and clean and sanitary. So we'll be very safe with that. So that'll be this coming Sunday. And I'll put out an alert later on to remind everyone. Of course, I already mentioned the other day that the Doe River Gorge trip for this coming Saturday has been canceled. <clears throat> the one thing that's still on is next Sunday at 530 at Lansing Park. It's an event called the Shoebox Effect. And so it's outside. You can bring a chair and uh, or a chair, a cheer, whichever one you use. And you can sit it out there in the grass and uh, we'll pray the Lord to send us some good weather. And so uh, the shoebox effect is where uh, a young lady who received a shoebox and, and she's going to be giving her testimony. There's going to be some music. So that, again, is in the, uh, the Lansing Park. That's going to be on the outside stage back behind the barn. So I'm sure they'll have some chairs, but I'd recommend you bring in uh, your own chair. And that's next Sunday at 530, the shoebox effect. I really hope uh, this coming year. Uh, we as a church that we could really uh, put forth a strong effort um, for our shoe boxes. Uh, we hadn't emphasized that in a couple of years and we need to get back to that. And so we're going to be doing that this year for sure. So those the those are the announcements that I have. I don't know of anything else. Uh, just remember this coming Sunday, we'll be celebrating communion. You'll do it right there in your car. So we'll be having parking lot church again this coming Sunday. Folks, this stuff is no joke. I'm not afraid. Uh, I see folks, some folks saying faith over fear. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not afraid. I have no fear uh, because I am under the wings 
of a holy God and he's going to take care of us. But God gives us a brain. And as leadership, we need to do everything we can to keep our folks safe. And so I have personally seen a lot of sick people. I mean, they're sick. And uh, the ERs, the ICUs, they're overrunning again. So we need to do all that we can to be safe. So that's why we're doing this. And um, we've prayed about it and feel that uh, the Lord really wanted us to do it this way. Okay, um, so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. We've got a lot of prayer requests. Uh, we appreciate those who are joining us here on Facebook and also on YouTube. We certainly appreciate y'all. And we're going to be getting into our Bible study here in just a minute. But for right now, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I've got several to kind of recap. So uh, number one, Matthew Greer. Let's continue to pray for Matthew Greer. They was really hoping that today uh, he would be able to come off the ventilator, but that just wasn't the case. He's not ready. He still has some swelling. And so they are going to leave him on the ventilator right now. He is able to breathe on his own, uh, but uh, he's not able to keep everything going like they want him to. And he still has some swelling. So right now, Matthew's still on the Greer. Matthew Greer is, is still on the vent. And so let's keep uh, Robert and Brenda and Jonathan, Savannah, and the whole family uh, in our prayers tonight. Let's also remember Jim and Kathy Weaver. Uh, of course, uh, Kathy had COVID and she's getting better uh, each day. It takes time. Uh, she had mentioned that uh, she started feeling a little better, then started feeling worse again. And so I remember how that felt. And so let's remember for Kathy, of course, uh, Jim had was admitted to the hospital in Watauga. Today, uh, he is doing some better, and so uh, not sure when he'll come home, but uh, let's continue to pray for Jim and Kathy. I put out a prayer request this afternoon for Matt Duncan. Some of you know Matt. Uh, let's be praying for him because and his family. This is Larry and Bert's grandson. Uh, Matt has made some decisions, and to this afternoon, he had a medical emergency, and uh, that's been taken care of, and so he's no longer in critical condition. Um, he's no longer in a life-threatening situation, but Matt needs our prayers. Uh, and so let's just be lifting up Matt Duncan. God knows the reason, and um, we'll be praying for Matt. Let's remember uh, Judy and Tootsie. Uh, Judy uh, tested positive. And, uh, and so I hope I'm not giving that away, uh, but we just need to be praying for Judy. I know she's feeling pretty rough. She's not been able to go see her mom there for a good while. So uh, let's just remember Judy tonight, lift her up in prayer and pray that the Lord will not allow this, uh, this virus, this terrible thing uh, to affect her too badly. I've got some other names that I want to mention. Uh, there's a paramedic over in, um, uh, Watauga County, his name is Nathan Elliott. He is in the hospital. Uh, as of today, he is about one step shy of, of being put on the ventilator. So he's in pretty bad shape. There's also another one named Thomas Ream. He's from here in the county. Hopefully some of you may know him, but he's a paramedic down in Wilkes County. And uh, he, is, he is on the ventilator and he's in really bad shape. So uh, they've seen a little bit of improvement today, which is a good thing. I guess the way they put it is why Marty said uh, it's been a good day. So uh, we'll take that, but continue to pray for Thomas. And let's continue to pray for all those that are affected by COVID. Uh, Miss Pat Jenkins is getting better. She's feeling better, but she's not at 100%. She's still weak. So please be praying for Patric Patricia. I always call her Pat, but Patricia. Uh, and uh, uh, also, you know, let's just pray for all the medics, all the nurses, uh, whether they're in the ER, whether they're uh, up on the second or third floor and other hospitals uh, in our area. Uh, you know, folks, they're they're really getting through it right now. They're really going through it right now, rather. And so let's pray for them as they respond and take care of folks. There's other things, uh, by the way, if you have additional prayer concerns, you can text them to me. I can see them right here on my phone. Also, uh, if you want to put them on the comments, I'll see them later. Other people will see them. And so you can do that on Facebook or uh, YouTube. 
Uh, a couple other prayer concerns. Let's pray for Afghanistan. Everybody's watched the news, I'm sure, and see the horrific sights over there. Uh, just pray that uh, for those that are innocent will not be harmed. Uh, let's pray for the missionaries over there. I was reading an article, a report today, where some people who are, as they say, quote unquote, Americans, uh, they are choosing to stay. I can't imagine that. Uh, but, uh, but you know, just let's just be praying for them, that entire situation. Uh, let's pray that God, you know, we got to pray for God's will, no doubt about it. But I sit here and think about, I pray that God will certainly uh, intervene and will hold back uh, the Taliban who are evil, evil people. And so let's pray for that. Let's continue to pray for Haiti. Oh, there's still so much going on down there in a world full of so much stuff. How can they be so lacking? So let's pray some resources will get down there. Of course, we need to pray for the United States of America. And in doing so, we pray for our local respond first responders, for our law enforcement. We pray, for, like I said earlier, for our nurses and our doctors and all the hospital staff, those that have to clean those rooms after a COVID patient you know, the dress that they have to wear and all that. It's really tough on it. It wears you down. I know that. So let's just be praying for our local area, for our county commissioners, for all, all the politicians, all of our leadership. Let's be praying for them. So these are some that I have. Like I said, please add uh, as you feel uh, a need to. And let's go to the Lord in prayer right now, shall we? Heavenly Father, we just come to you now during this time. Lord, as we're doing this online service, we're praying, God, that decisions that we have made uh, will help keep people safe. Lord, we are not afraid, uh, but Lord, you gave us a mind. You gave us uh, the ability, and, and I thank the Lord. I thank you, Lord, uh, for a group of deacons that I can uh, talk to, and we can come to these best decisions. And so, Lord, I appreciate uh, our leadership here in our church. God, I pray for all these names that we've just mentioned, each and every one, Lord. Some of them are in dire need. Uh, Lord, even tonight, Lord, they're facing some things that that, that just, just hardly can't comprehend. But, but, Lord, they're in a serious state. And so, God, I just pray for them. I pray that if it be your will that you would intervene. I pray, God, that every lesson, everything that needs to be learned, from these situations and these circumstances, Lord, they'll be learned. And Lord, uh, I pray tonight for uh, those affected by COVID, Lord, this has been going on for so long. But Lord, I'm just mindful uh, of, of your children, Lord, the uh, uh, Israelites having to be in the desert, in the wilderness for 40 years. And so Lord, I know that it's we're in our second year but Lord, I just pray. I pray for the teachers. God, I pray for the students that are in school, that there's so much unknown. Uh, our lives are upside down sometimes. And, and Lord, just help us calmly accept it and continue and think about the good things in our life and, and how fortunate we are. Help us to do that, Lord. God, we pray for the country of Afghanistan. We pray, Lord, for the people. We pray safety upon those that are working over there, our soldiers, our men and women that's over there and try, trying to get people out safe. Lord, put a protective shield around them, Lord. I pray tonight uh, in Jesus' name, Lord, that there'll not be another single uh, person harmed over there as they're doing their task, their job. Lord, those people in Haiti, and there's other countries as well, Lord, but we just pray for the sadness. We pray for those that are hurting. We pray for those, Lord, that are so uh, so misfortunate and so much more unfortunate than what we are. And so, Lord, help us to have a spirit of giving, uh, a heart full of love for our fellow mankind. And, Lord, I just pray and ask all these things in the wonderful name and the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. Again, uh, let me mention just for a second that uh, my my little thing here looks different. It does not look the same as it usually. You know, they always change and stuff. And uh, so I cannot see any comments. I don't know how to get to that 
get this thing to there. But anyway, so we're going to get on with our Bible study. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you, we're going to be in a couple different uh, areas. I'm going to reread what I uh, read on Sunday <clears throat> when we had our services past Sunday. So that's from Psalms chapter 36. But I want you to have your Bibles open to Psalm chapter 91 and also Psalm 61. So I'll mention those again. So I'm going to begin tonight, first of all, with Psalms chapter 36, verse 5 through 7. And the Bible says this, Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth into the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep. O Lord, thou preservest man and beast. Let me uh, got to turn my desk lamp on so I can see here. So that's Psalms chapter 36, verses 5 through 7. And, uh, you know, we talked Sunday about God's unlimited loving kindness. And we're going to kind of continue that thought, but we're going to have a very specific focus uh, here tonight. Also read Sunday from Psalms chapter 61, verses 3 and 4, where the Bible says, Thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. So if we were together tonight, if we were there uh, at church tonight, I would want to ask some of you for some input. And some of you are so good to, to put in that input. And that might, sometimes that makes it so much better. But I want you to consider this tonight. We can't do it here but if you'd like to make a comment on Facebook, certainly other people will see that. But consider this. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? Or how would you compare in your own life being under and or protected by the wings or under the wings of God? What does that mean to you? When we put forth this image of being protected by God, by being under the shelter of God's wings, under his protection, what does that mean to you? And in your own life, as you compare that in your own life, what does that mean to you? So you stop thinking about that and uh, jot that down and maybe think about it uh, some more a little bit later. So we're going to move on to Psalms chapter 91. Psalms chapter 91. And uh, I want to read for just a moment uh, the first few verses, Psalms chapter 91, verse 1. We'll start with, the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Remember, that's what I'm asking you to, to, to think about that. What does it mean to you when you think about um, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Verse 3, Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, verse 4 says, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So remember tonight, that's the question we're asking. What does it mean to you? And especially in verse four, when it says, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So we're going to look tonight uh, a little bit deeper into that. And so, I want to say this, when I when I start thinking about protection, I don't automatically or I don't instinctively uh, begin to think about birds' feathers as protection. Uh, though a bird's feathers might seem like a flimsy uh, form of protection, there's certainly more to the bird's wings and the feathers than meets the eye. Bird's feathers are an amazing example of God's design. Feathers has a, a smooth part and a fluffy part. Now you just have to go and if you like, do your own research on, on birds' feathers. But I just want to give you a quick highlight. The smooth part of the feather has stiff little barbs. 
stiff little barbs. And uh, they have little tiny hooks that lock together like the prongs on a zipper. And that acts as protection. That makes it stronger. All right. The fluffy part keeps the bird warm. Together, both parts of the feather protect the bird from the wind and the rain. But many baby birds are only covered, they're not fully developed, so they're only covered in the fluffy part and their feathers haven't fully uh, developed. So a mother bird has to cover them in the nest with her own feathers to protect them from the wind and the rain. This image of God covering us with his feathers, like, it's, like it says in uh, Psalms 91, and verse four, that imagery of God covering us with his feathers in verse four and, and, and in many other Bible passages as well is one of comfort and protection. The image that comes to mind is a mother bird covering her little ones with her feathers. Like, a, like I mentioned Sunday, like a parent's arms is a safe place to retreat from a scary storm or a hurt. God's comforting presence provides safety and protection from life storms. And we all know that life is full of storms. Though we go through trouble and heartache, we can face them without fear as long as our faces are turned toward God. And as the Bible says back in Psalm 61, he has been a shelter for me, a strong tower. He's a refuge in the covert of his wings will I hide. So let's look at some spiritual lessons tonight, just for a few minutes, uh, that we can learn from birds. From birds, I love birds. Uh, was sitting out someone's house the other day, prob probably to me, I, I, I guess that little bird is considered a bird, but a little hummingbird. Yeah, I guess it would be, and how it's hummingbird. But uh, their wings go so fast you can't even see them. They're fascinating, aren't they? So I want to see if we can't learn uh, some lessons from birds, especially their wings. And so uh, this is an idea that's mentioned in Scripture, so it's certainly Bible. Now, keep this in mind. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, the Bible says, and he admonished us to look at the birds in the air. The Lord Jesus tells us to look at the birds in the air. That's fascinating. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Oh, how I love the morning times to get a cup of coffee and go out uh, on the deck and you hear the birds. You can hear them and you can see them and watch them. And every now and again, a deer will come down through there, but that's a whole different story. So let's look at some spiritual lessons here just for a few moments that we can learn from birds and especially their feathers. When we think about this idea, the spiritual lesson of escape or security, wings are the safest asset for, for the birds. In Psalms chapter 55, King David looked at birds. Now, let me ask you this question Have you ever watched a bird take off and just get plumb out of sight? I have, and I've often thought, what would it feel like just to cruise away? What would it feel like if, just to be able to flap your wings and just take off? I'd, I'd love to know, <laughs> I think. Uh, in Psalm chapter 55, David cried out when he, when he was in the midst of his adversaries. He said, fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. Listen to those words. They have come over me and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I just fly off and leave the problems. One of the greatest benefits of having wings is that a bird can quickly spread them and take off and avoid danger flying high above, far above the problems uh, that they have. In fact, this is how God described his intervention to the children of Israel when they were doing that. 
he says in Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, he says, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians. We remember that story. And how I bore you uh, on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. So God is reminding them that uh, what he did for them, like on eagle's wings. And so escape, security, that's a lesson that can be learned from bird's wings. Defense can also be learned. Isaiah chapter 31 verse 5 gives a vivid word picture of this fierceness parent, uh, this parent bird, and how uh, they defend their young. Uh, He says uh, in Isaiah chapter 31 verse 5, the Bible says, like birds flying about, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem, defending. He will also deliver it. Passing over, he will preserve it. We hear people say, well, watch out for mama bear. Well, we better watch out for mama bird too. Have you ever been uh, dive bombed by mama bird and you're getting close to the nest? Uh, and I have, I know how that feels. So defense, escape, and security. But now think about this lesson that we can learn, attack. We think, well, we can't be talking about attack because we're Christians and, you know, we can't do that. We can't be on the offensive. We can't go attack other people. That's not what it's talking about. But you can attack a problem. You can attack the devil. You can certainly do that. In biblical times, an eagle in flight was one of the fastest known animals and compared to humans, it could just co- just cover this huge amount of distance, right? I read where eagles can uh, uh, can just cruise at uh, about thirty miles an hour, and they can reach over a hundred miles an hour, sometimes well over a hundred miles an hour when they're dive bombing. Now that's fast. That's getting out of dodge. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse forty-nine describes how an enemy will come upon Israel swiftly, swiftly. Listen to that. Deuteronomy 28, 28, 49. The Lord will bring a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, swift as the eagle's wings. And then again, in Jeremiah chapter four, verse 13, the Bible says, behold, he shall come up like clouds and his chariots like a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. The horses are faster than eagles. Listen, when God wants to, he can move swiftly. Sometimes God chooses to move slowly and we're like, come on, God, I got to go. But when God wants to, he can move so swiftly. And I know I've seen. So let's recap for a minute. When we think about the spiritual lessons and ideas that we can learn about escape, security, defense, attack, or even offense, All of that is there, and we can learn that from birds. But there's another idea here, and that is comfort and protection. That's perhaps the most common uh, used analogy uh, when it comes to wings in Scripture, is to liken them to God's care and His protection. After the Exodus, God cared for, for and carried the Israelites for 40 years. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 10 through 12, Bible says this, he found him in a desert land and in the wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled him. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye, as an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led them and there was no foreign God with him. So just another example of how God uses the example of eagles and wings and feathers when it comes to how he takes care of us. And so when we get to thinking about comfort and protection, we know eagles are known for sitting on their nest and protecting the eggs and their young. I read a story about an eagle who who was during a snowstorm and uh, he protect she she protected uh, her nest And she was there for over 24 hours. And when the storm ended, she was completely covered. You couldn't even see her. But as she rose and began to flop those feathers after the storm passed by, she flopped those feathers 
and began to spread her mighty wings and shook off the snow. And that was her babies, nice and warm. Now, just put yourself in that situation. I have been there and I know that you've been there as well. Overwhelmed, overcome, you're, you're going under. You just can't. You just can't do it anymore. You can't take it anymore. Picture yourself in that nest and God spreading his wings. Now, if I don't give you great comfort and great joy, I don't know what will. Because I'm telling you, when the storm's over, God will certainly spread his mighty wings and you will have been protected. I was reading a Jewish author and he said this, the idea about the eagle protecting her young, and then spreading her wings. A Jewish author said this, this is the same imagery that God gives us in the festival of Sukkot, and that is the Feast of Tabernacles. Dwelling in temporary shelters for seven days reminds, of, reminds us of God's divine presence carrying and sustaining the Israelites in the desert for 40 years. Now, I'm not Jewish. Probably not, nobody listening to me today is Jewish, but let's learn from this. Their feet did not swell and their clothing did not wear out. He provided water, nourishment, and protection. He overshadowed them in a barren wilderness where they would have died on their own. Yet nothing sustained the people more than the knowledge that around it were the wings of divine providence. Now, I love Messianic Jewish folks, uh, the Jewish folks that says, you know what? Uh, Jesus has come. The Messiah has come and he's he's come in the name in the man of Jesus. And so uh, I, I can learn a lot from them. The faith of Jews through the generation was not a simple, nor was it blind. Uh, this Jewish author I was reading went on to say they had no illusions that all was well in this dark world. Yet they sat in the sukkah and they sang. They sang. That's why we. That's what I was talking about Sunday, where we can rejoice. We're facing trouble. I mean, real hard trouble, but yet we can still rejoice. That is what comes. Well, what does this mean to us? It means to uh, to know that life is full of risk, but yet, hey, I'm going to go on anyway. To sense the full insecurity of the human situation. Can you imagine for just a moment? I'm almost done. Can you imagine for just a moment facing this world, facing this life without Almighty God? I can't even, it takes my breath away just thinking about it. See, we can look back at all the times, even though in this insecure times, in this troubling times in which we live. Not very many people have confidence in their government and they don't trust the government, but yet we can still rejoice. Troubling times around us we see, but yet we can still rejoice. Now that's called faith. We can look back and see all of the times that God has helped us, sustained us, and we too can rejoice in the shadow of his wings. If you're listening to me tonight and you're facing a difficult time, let me tell you something. All that stuff I read about in the Bible, he's the same God. He's the God of the Israelites through the 40 years of wilderness. And he's the same God leading us today in 2021, right here in, in North Carolina, in Ash County or wherever you're at watching me right now. I have to keep that in mind that other people watch us. So Pennsylvania, the state of Washington, Delaware, you never know where folks are at. But wherever you're at, the same God. Down in Florida, I don't forget you even. See, we see this same kind of faith in Psalm chapter 63. When David was reflecting on his times uh, in the desert, in the wilderness, in his own life, he says in Psalm 63, verse 7, because, because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. And the Psalms, we find so many other ones. Uh, I've got just a couple more minutes. Let me read just a couple to you. Um, 
Psalms chapter 17, verse 8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Man, I'll tell you what, folks, that'll work right there. I mean, you just call out to God. You got a need to call out to God to right there. That will work. Because you have been my help, I trust you. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. Psalm 17, 8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. That's what I meant to read again. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Psalms 36, 7. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. Therefore, the children of men may put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Psalm 61, 4. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. Um, Psalm, I'm sorry, that was Psalms 57, 1. Psalms 57, 1, until these calamities have passed by. Psalm 61, 4, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. One more, Psalms 91, I've already read that. But he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. I hope we all know tonight that we can trust in the Lord. Amen. We can trust in the Lord. So I hope that idea, I hope that little bit just helps you tonight as we think about this, as we're doing online church. We're being smart. We're not afraid. Uh, we have no have no fear. Why? Listen, if I was to die right now, if you was to never see me again, ever again, you know by my testimony where I'll be. I'll be in heaven. And so I have no fear. No fear whatsoever as far as that concerned. But we're going to be safe. May God bless you tonight. Let's end in prayer. Father, we just pause right now, Lord, thanking you for your word thanking you for each and every person. Lord, I pray that you will bless that home. I pray, God, that you would bless those children, those grandchildren. Lord, we know uh, how much love and, and how precious it is to have kids and grandkids, but we also know how those children and those grandchildren can absolutely break our hearts. And so, God, I just pray for each person tonight that's dealing with that. Lord, you know the situation. For this COVID situation, for those who are sick, God, I pray that you'll heal them quickly. And I pray, Lord, uh, again, for all these requests uh, that we have made tonight, Lord. We want to tell you that we love you. And, Lord, we just want to keep on serving you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you for joining us. And, again, remember this coming Sunday will be uh, Parking Lot Church uh, once again. And uh, I'll see you then. God bless you. Goodbye. And if anybody's left on Facebook, we're ending now as well. So goodbye.